Yeah, that's pretty good. Good. Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. So if you watched the past two videos, you'll know that I made birthday presents for my brother and sister. So this week I decided to try and make Mylar balloons. Uh, I'm going to warn you now, it didn't work that well. I tried so many different ways to make it work, but... Uh... The results are mediocre at best, <laughs> but I decided to upload this video anyways because I figured maybe you'll notice something I missed or you'll learn from my mistakes and it's always fun to watch people fail. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go watch me fail at making Mylar balloons like five different ways. <laughs> So the materials I used for this project was a old emergency blanket. I figured the material looked the closest to a mylar balloon with its reflectiveness and it's made of plastic. So I was hoping it would act like plastic and, you know, seal with this vacuum sealer I'm using. As you can see, it did not seal together. It really didn't do a whole lot, I guess. The temperature wasn't high enough for this type of plastic. The vacuum sealer is more for like plastic bags and emergency blankets are made to withstand heat a little bit better than that. So I decided to try out a different way of heat sealing using a soldering gun. I tried it at the high temperature of 450 and at a lower temperature of 250 and this was the result. As you can see, this time the plastic actually melted, but it melted a little too well. Even at the temperature of 250, it kind of tore right through the plastic. And it did seal it in some places, but unlike an actual sealer, it didn't press the plastic together while melting it. And so I got these little holes in the plastic. Needless to say, this little heat sealing method did not work, and so it was on to the next attempt. For my third and final attempt at heat sealing, I took two pieces of that plastic and wrapped it in parchment paper, and then I took a flat iron or a hair straightener and tried to press the plastic together. This method is very similar to the vacuum sealer that I used in the first attempt, but with the hair straightener, I can actually change the temperatures on it, so I tried it on low, and that didn't work. So then I switched it up to medium, and then eventually high. In case you're underestimating how hot a flat iron can get, most have low temperatures around 200 degrees Fahrenheit and high temperatures of 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the same temperature as the soldering iron that I'd used. Granted, this flat iron I'm using is on the older side and it only has levels, so I can't actually tell exactly what temperature it's at, but it's really interesting that it didn't do anything to the plastic, it just kind of melted the reflectiveness of it a little bit and flattened it <laughs> like a straightener. My guess is that the parchment paper was a little too effective in its heat resistance and stopped the plastic from melting, but according to the internet, it said to use parchment paper and I also didn't want to ruin my hair straightener by melting plastic all over it. So I kind of gave up on the whole heat sealing part of this project and moved on to just trying to make the balloons by sealing it a different way. Here I am drawing out with a marker the number that I wanted to be a balloon and then cutting it out with scissors. Something I learned later on is that you don't actually want any tight curves in your balloon and that you actually want it to be kind of like long because when it blows up it'll really curl up. If you don't know what I mean by that, You'll see later on in the video when I attempt to blow these balloons up. So since my heat sealing didn't work, I went with tape. <laughs> I went with tape sealing. I mean, tape creates a great seal and uh, I had it on hand. <laughs> for the tight corners, I put a piece of tape on either side and pressed them together. But for the straight edges, I just folded over the tape. And then for the valve portion of the balloon, I used some double-sided tape and I took this plastic tube and taped it 
to the inside of the balloon. Time to test and see whether this balloon actually blows up into a balloon. And I mean, it kind of did, but there were all these little tiny micro holes around the edges. So as I blew into the balloon, I would feel around the edges for any air that was escaping the balloon. And here are the results from the tape attempt. As you can see, the numbers are a little wonky and the six curled up, so I fixed them a little bit. And I didn't put a hole in the center of the six because I thought it would be hard to seal. If you ask me, they kind of look like balloons, but they don't have that expanded look to them that balloons do. So I felt like this wasn't good enough and I had to try again. Since heat didn't work, and tape produced rather poor results, I decided it was time to try some glue. For my first attempt, I used some contact cement to try and glue this balloon together because someone recommended it to me. I've never used contact cement before, but when I got some on my finger, it kind of had the consistency of super glue. And then for my second glue attempt, I decided to just use a hot glue gun. It's easy, I could spread it around, and I felt like it'd give me the best seal. I guess we didn't get off to a great start. Ooh. And I'll sometimes be driving us apart. Ooh. And why you make up your mind so fast we drive? And here are the final results of the glue attempt. The number one is the contact cement, and the number five is the hot glue gun. As you can see, the hot glue gun gave us a much better seal than the contact cement did. But the main reason I called all of the balloons failures in the beginning is because they didn't really stay inflated. I guess that has to do with my valve issues. I don't know how to make a one-way valve, so I kind of went with a plastic tube with some cuts in it. I tried looking up how those flat balloon one-way valves work and making my own, but obviously it didn't work out. So please comment down below if you know how to make a one-way valve. Hit that like button and subscribe because I post new videos every Friday. Thank you for watching!